Hey guys, welcome back to JR14. I cannot make this up. Project Mark 7's broken again. And this time, it's an actual catastrophic failure. So let's get into it. Let's go. As you guys remember, I, this is European Auto, as you know. My love, this is like my second home, evidently. That's Kevin. Um, if you guys don't remember, I literally was just here two weeks ago to install a fuel pump controller because I had issues with the car before. And this guy installed it for me. He doesn't like, he doesn't like Volkswagen things. So, Felipe and Louis are gonna be working on the car today. <laughs> um, there's a lot of things we need to talk about. So, first of all, we're just gonna talk about really, really quickly what's going on and what happened. Um, so, Felipe thinks, well, Felipe doesn't think anything. Felipe didn't do anything wrong. Felipe installed everything right because this thing hasn't broken yet. Well, actually, the funny thing about it is it's not that that's broken. It's, it's, it's that big component right down there. And if you guys are not aware of that, that is the actual transmission. I blew the trans in the GTI. I cannot believe this thing broke again. And now it's the trans. The second most expensive part on this car. The first being the engine, which I already took care of. But now it is the, now it is the transmission. So, a um, couple things that we're going to be looking at. We're not going to be taking the, tra the trans apart today. We're not doing that. We're simply just getting the car fixed. Uh, but there's a couple of things that I'm going to be switching out. And um, we're going to talk about it really quickly. So, here's Felipe. He literally just came back from Impact. Did you know? <laughs> burnt some tires, got a cool haircut in the process. Burnt some tires, came back, gave everybody a hell of a show, and now he's fixing this to be reborn again. Because I'm really having bad luck with this car, and I'm really understanding that this is something that I need to, I need to evaluate other things with it, which we'll talk about later on. And speaking of that, I might need tires in the front camber life so hey day so that's that's unfortunately what's going on right now it really just does suck because of the fact that I literally just did all of this and I literally just worked you know I did everything you know, I, I did everything I was supposed to do right I did the engine rebuild I did uh, I did the engine rebuild we replaced the clutch the first time it failed and then we replace the clutch again, and I think I'm having transmission slash clutch problems. Um, but I can tell you right now who did not install it incorrectly, it's this guy right here. This guy completely disassembled, took the motor out the whole in the one day, disassembled it completely in the next day, and put it back together. He had the car up and running in a week. So it's not his fault, this guy's very experienced too. All the hard stuff, the Porsches, the, the W12, really real strong, so I know that it's going to be good um and i'm going to be pretty excited about it but you know i'm i'm, I'm pretty excited for the fact that these guys are working on the car because I, they, they, they're going to be moving like hella quick and you know they again always look out for your boy jr14 which which really is unfortunate because i want to give them a break already but i don't think i can ever give them a break felipe is like tired of seeing this car he wants to see it ripping not breaking and I'm going to step out of their way because they're trying to like hustle and bustle and get this moving really quickly. The impact. But this broke literally three days before impact. It broke three days before impact and I couldn't go. And I was supposed to go. Do you know how many people huh. spent thousands and thousands of dollars to get their cars done for impact that were actually BMWs that didn't make it? It wasn't any of them at European Auto though. Oh, this? What was wrong with this? This car's always running. Why not? They didn't make it. Well, well, you took the wheels off of that and put it on a loud car, right? Yeah, but I still got wheels for that. Uh-oh. They just didn't make it on the car. Uh-oh. So, he's talking about not mechanical problems. He's talking... Oh, you are talking about mechanical problems. Oh, damn. What's the white car's excuse? Because that's your baby. Mechanically? Yeah. Nothing. It didn't get swapped. Exactly. So, yeah. It's a desire mechanical issue. So it, the car could drive today. It could go on down on the lift and it could drive home today. It's 20 minutes, so it's not oh, now it's super slow. Yeah. 
It's always been super slow. Yeah, okay. It just does nice donuts. <laughs> yeah, so literally I haven't had this car on the road for a couple of weeks now. It's like literally kind of annoying. But, you know, it's just, I don't know. I just feel as if sometimes realizations come into play and there's a realization about this car at this moment. And I'm gonna talk about that at the end of the video. But now we're gonna walk around the shop really quickly and just see what's around. And, ooh, look at this Mark VI. Oh, on bags. Sexy. Ooh. Got another one waiting for a strut. A day's about to wide body it. Dave, what's wrong? Yo, you never, you never like hyped like you used to be, man. I've never been on videos. Oh, come on, man. I haven't seen you in like forever. <laughs> gonna go on this side real quick let's go through the door oh we got kev we already talked about kev hey we got mr <laughs> mr yp on the detail i appreciate you leaving the decal on my gas tank that was oh, hilarious somebody actually came here because they saw that <laughs> really yeah see he's like i saw you in the, i saw you in that video you see you see how you see how you see what i do right he's like you see? I, was like, like, I saw the name in the gas cap. I was like, yes, <laughs> His daily right here. So one thing I want to talk to you guys is about dailies. Um, I've come to that point in my life where I think I cannot continue to spend crazy amounts of money to get this car fixed. And it's not even, it's not even, and maybe it is my fault, maybe it's not. They're actually taking it apart now, but I just don't know, right? I don't know if, if that's going to be a thing of where I'm going to have to just figure out if I'm gonna go ahead and pick up a daily driver. But link down in the, you know, put down the comments down below. I'm looking for a daily driver as of now. One to $2,000 is my absolute limit. A grand to $2,000. I preferably want a Honda Civic. Let me know what you guys think about a Honda Civic on the channel. Another thing I'm thinking about is possibly an E46 325 or 328 XI um, that I would like. Also, pretty much any of the old BMWs, like an old E39 5 Series. If you know of anyone that's selling one, please put the link in the description down below. And let me know, guys, if you see any other cars that you think might be interesting or cars you might want to see on the channel, definitely go ahead and check that out. But let's go back inside because it's hot. It's like 90 degrees out here and they're able to squeeze me in today, which was great. Um, I made this appointment, but I showed up late um, and I almost couldn't get the car fixed today. But they are able to do that for me. So let's go inside and check it out right now because it's hot. Ooh. Check out that other side. Check that whole other side. Ooh. Ooh. Talk about breast cancer awareness. Yes, sir. Let's go. That's how you do it right there. Wow. Okay. As you guys know, BJ Print Coat Rapid. Always doing the crazy stuff right here. This uh this is wild. Okay. okay. Oh wait, I thought it was Pearl, but it's it's just wet. Okay. <laughs> I was like, oh let me find out. These wheels are sick. I kind of miss Hondas. This is why I said the daily, man. I think I think I have to go back to my Honda roots. Because if you guys don't if you guys are OG subscribers, you know that back in the day, oh man, hang on. That's I'm that's all I'm gonna give y'all. It's it, it's all I'm gonna give y'all. It's it's red as you can see, and that wheel. That's all you do. Oh oh oh! No, we can't pull up the panties too much. That's ooh, you don't yeah. want it to get a cold. You don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> but how, like I said, that's why I said maybe maybe you guys want to see like maybe like a budget eBay budget build or something like that. I think that would be kind of cool. You know, try to like parts, talk about parts, what parts you should get, what parts you shouldn't get, and just like you know, but not doing so crazy like Project Mark Seven. Because I still have a surprise for you guys at the end of the year for that, that nobody knows about. Except him. And except him. And except all of them in that room over there. But, <laughs> but, but, other, than, but other than them, nobody knows. Oh, well, except my other friends. Except the guys that are taking it. Except, yeah, there's, there's people that know, but you guys don't know. But I guarantee you, it's just gonna blow your mind when it does happen. So. Make sure you stay tuned to that because I need a daily driver by next month. Meaning, if you're watching this video, I don't know when I'm going to post this out, but it's got to be done by September. So, like I said, one $2,000 budget, preferably a Honda Civic, preferably an EJ, EK, um, 1999, 96, 96 to 2000 Honda Coupe or sedan. I really don't care if it's automatic because it's a daily driver. 
Um, I'm not gonna rice it out. I'm still gonna make it look OEM plus and clean, but just that I want it. I want a clean one. So if you guys know of anybody that's selling one, let me know, please. Um, but yeah, maybe something like this. Oh, you guys, that's a dead giveaway. That's a dead giveaway. Bro. You said what? Oh man, you're, I want to buy your car for twenty five thousand dollars. Not for sale. Everything's for sale. Everything's for sale. So, this is BJ's new toy. Uh, man. Mm. In a crazy color. What's the name of this color? Tango. Tango red. Tango red. Which clearly looks like orange. Yeah, it, it's weird because <laughs> on camera, it looks kind of red. But in it does person, look kind of red on camera. Yeah, and in person, it looks more. It orange. looks orange. So, I parked near uh, a Milano red. Whoa, what's that, bro? What's that? What's that dirt? Look, he's yo, 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 Yuri, yo, what's this dirt Look, in here, we bro? Just, we literally just came from the Oh, yeah. Yep. They, he went to Impact. I couldn't go to Impact, man. Because yeah. my car keep breaking. We went to Impact yesterday, so that's why it's, you know, that, that lets you know she's not just a garage queen. Good. No garage queen. Good. I was playing with a Tesla. And the Camaro, Camaro SS. Okay. And she boogies, man. A lot of people like that 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 BMW M2. I went with this, mm. and um, I'm happy. Yo, downpipes and then the exhaust oh on this thing God. is gonna sound stupid. Oh and if and catless, don't do cat it catless. Do, do I want to start? Nah, you could do the honors, huh? All right, that's I, until I'm able to drive it, I'm not gonna start it. Go All ahead. Right, so no, no, no. We're going to do it later. We're going to do it later. You guys don't get that. You guys are going to get a full-blown review of this 2018 RS3. This car right here will be reviewed on my channel once he breaks it in and is comfortable with me driving it. And we'll definitely get this review for you guys because this thing... Mm, 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 mm. Okay. Let's go back to see what they're doing. They probably took half the car apart already. Surely enough. Let's go back in here right now. It's at home, bro. <laughs> don't try this at home. I know you don't like me, bro. Huh? I know you don't like me right now. What do you mean? I'm trying not to break it all the time. I swear. Like, it's not me. I mean, I know how to drive. You see me drive. So, all right. So, they're, they're average. Actually, you know, they're getting everything set up and everything like that. So, I'm going to move forward and show you what we're going to be putting in the car. Whoa, this is not DKM. I know. I know it's not. So, um i actually decided to change forces and go with this company black forest industries or bfi so um the reasoning why i switched is because i just don't think the dkm is going to be like i don't think the dkm is going to be like good enough for the car meaning that i i'm i would i don't want to it's really difficult to say but I wanted to go a new route because I think that this is a better choice for my build. Um, so I'm just gonna open this up really quickly. All right, so they're finally about to take everything apart. Like that. But like I said, so Black Forest Industries, right? Okay. So this is a Black Forest Industries. If you guys don't know, they make five different stages of this clutch. So this clutch is basically a stage four. And the reason why I went with a stage four, so as you guys can see here, clutch, this is kind of OEM. This is kind of OEM plus. This is kind of like some power, but meaty, like, like just pretty meaty. I would say like more of the less of like 350 wheel or 400, but I went with this one. So there's a six pug sprung clutch. It's good for 500 torque. Um, and the reason why I went in, I know it's gonna make noise and people say, oh my God, BFI makes noise and all this other stuff. It's a race car. I don't really care if it makes noise. Yeah, okay. Here we go. So, here's the pressure plate. So, here's the pressure plate right here. As you guys can see, BFI on the plate. And it's actually very, it's going to be very strong. It's very meaty. Um, also, so here's everything that comes in the kit. So, you do have Loctite right here for the bolts. Speaking of those bolts, here you go with the flywheel. And here's the clutch. So, this is the clutch disc itself. Like I said, it's a six puck clutch, boom, and there's little springs in it. So one thing about the DKM, it didn't have springs, so I don't know if that's what caused the failure of the, of the transmission. 
or whatnot, but Geo definitely just confirmed that the transmission is failed. Um, I don't have second gear and it's making a lot of different noises and stuff like that. Don't so, cry. what? Don't cry. <laughs> this guy. So, this is only part of the puzzle. So, like I said, it's a single mass flywheel. So, that's where the chatter comes into play. Um, I really don't care if it makes noise because obviously it's a race car, it's going to make noise. And that's about it. And there's a the flywheel right there. Tyra Sport dead set kit. <laughs> so, I'm curious of what the fluid looks like coming out of the trans. But like I said, we're not going to disassemble the trans today. We're just basically getting the car back on the road. And let me just step outside back here real quick. And I'm going to just explain to you really quickly what happened. I was driving home, right? So I was driving home. And I was driving. I, I moved. I don't live in my parents' house anymore. So I live... I would say about 40 miles away. So I was driving home just to visit my parents and grab some more stuff because I just finished moving. And what I noticed was the car was fine. That was the whole thing about it. The car was fine. There was no issues. There was nothing wrong. And all of a sudden, when I get off the highway, I come to a stop and I'm waiting for merging traffic. I went into first gear. Car was fine. Shifted into second. Normal driving, not aggressive at all because I'm in a residential neighborhood. Um, and I noticed that all of a sudden I heard pop and a lot of grinding, a lot of metallic shavings, blah, 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 it was bad. And then second gear, which just was not happy at all. So I don't know what could have happened, but I'm going to come back to European Auto later on during the week, most likely probably the weekend and I'm, like weekend in the morning time. And we're going to take apart the transmission and see what the failure was. Um, the good thing about that is if it's minor, I'll fix it. And I'll ask you if I can keep it here for a, for a spare one if I need it. Or if you guys need a transmission. Um, a couple of things. So, uh, as see, look at these. Look, you're talking about these guys can't work fast. These guys are amazing. And I don't even ask them to work fast like that. They're just doing what they're doing and how they're doing it. Like, Felipe ain't playing no games. Louie ain't playing no games. These guys aren't playing around. These guys are just like, oh, my God, a clutch job. They don't want to even deal with me anymore. European auto assistant. <laughs> you look like a child. I love charged. I love I'm running around this thing in impact the whole time. It's like, yo, what'd you bring to impact, bro? I'm like this. Everybody's like, what? Come on, man. I was having fun. Come on. They call me Paul Blart. Peanut butter Blart. Peanut butter Blart. You don't pay for how long the job takes. You pay for all the years it took to do the job that fast. Fire! Oh yeah. And then you tilt back. There it is. Wow. Ooh. So now we're trying to figure out. See what's going on. Yeah. Why are you so close? You know, I'm, I'm holding the camera. I'm with, I gotta get all the footage, bro. Oh, we gotta transfer that. That. I will do it again. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. I forgot about that. <laughs> Does that look like a failed clutch to you? I don't know. Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like it. No. Does it look like a misaligned clutch? No. Doesn't look like a misaligned clutch. Wouldn't Looks a misaligned clutch not allow the transmission to slide on? That's very accurate. That's, that's true, you isn't it? You would just have to like fucking hammer the fucking hand. Yeah. You would have to hammer it in mm. if, the, if, if the clutch is not in the right place. And then you fuck up either you the clutch, clutch or the spline or the, or the transmission, the input shaft. Yeah. But you know, that's funny because 
certain company said that the clutch was misaligned when installed. It's been a long time. Well, the, the, the throwout bearing has some play to it. Maybe they're not having a problem. <laughs> the clutch has play again. How? Look at the friction play. It's loose. It was not like that when we installed it in. I know. I remember checking that too. Well, this wow. is loose. So what? The teeth are good. The spline is alright. Okay. I put it like this, and mm -hmm. I put it. I'm looking at you like you. I mean, so I mean, you did, like I said. If it's aligned, if this is like this. Like that's the only way the transmission can officially go in is if it's aligned. If it's not aligned, it's like the teeth is like. Slightly like, off. Uh, slightly off. How the fuck am I gonna put the transmission? So the transit shot. There's no no second gear. We're gonna come back in the middle of the week, like later on in the week, and we're gonna take the transmission apart and show you exactly what happened. But shout out to Auto House because Auto House didn't have this transmission. Um, um, Warren Walburn. I'll put the link in the description below. But Auto House recommended me. Or suggested me to a uh, yep that is in fact uh trans i called auto house about finding locating a trans because i lost second gear it was bad grinding all that stuff and i found the trans well auto house didn't have a trans but they said hey we don't have one but we know who does robber auto brothers and pa shout out to um shout out to john I believe his name is john um, they have, they had a 20, what, what is it? 2017 GTI. What was ironic is that the, my GTI and that crash GTI that they have at a salvage was actually built in the same week. So if you ever want to know the transmission that's in the, all the GTIs with the performance package, if you don't, if you don't know if you have the performance package, if you have GTI on your brake calipers or if your G or if the, the diff extends this far out. See this little, see this little computer on the end here. This is for the Haldex. This is for the diff. This is the diff right here. This portion of it's the diff. This is the actual transmission. It actually comes with all, pretty much everything, and they cleaned it up very, very. It's very clean actually, which is nice. Um, it already has a throttle bearing in it, but we're obviously not going to be reusing that. This, the, the transmission code for Performance Package GTIs is QUJ. So there are three different types of transmissions that are offered with the Mark 7 platform. There's the DSG, um, actually now there's four because there's a DSG six speed, a DSG seven speed, and there's two manuals. There's a manual without LSD and there's a manual of like with a, with like a factory LSD um, or no LSD at all. I'm not sure if it comes with L like the, the base ones that they come with LSD and have a different mechanical LSD or if they just don't have LSD and all you have to add it. But this is this is the uh or the other manual transmission is this and this is the um the quj transmission so the quj transmission does have the Heldex front diff or the e diff as they would call it um and this one actually does come with the computer it comes with pretty much everything and it's very clean um and the way that we know it's a quj is this right here so i don't know if you can see that but it says quj right on this brick right here and this um the the number plate piece they do offer warranty on their products which is nice so i did get a, a, a 90 day warranty from the company with this um they were able to ship it from pa all the way to oceanside new york at the shop this thing's been sitting here for about a week and i'm extremely happy to say that this should work i have rover motor oil 75w 90 race um transmission fluid as well as the BFI stage four six pug clutch that's going in the car. Decided if I'm not gonna, you know, build the trans, it was just too expensive to do it. Um, and you're saying like, oh my God, Jay, you make all this power, you rebuilt the motor, why don't you build the trans? 
to rebuild the trans is thousands of dollars and this car is so new that the parts to locate them you can get them but they're still at a high premium so it doesn't really make sense to, to you know to do that so i was like okay let me locate another trans the thing about getting one of these they're extremely rare volkswagen doesn't have any and they're on back order a remand version for that i believe was 2100 i picked this up for 1350 so it's it's not really a not really a bad deal at all but um i'm pretty happy about it all right as you guys know i just went on instagram live to do that to check out jr14yt on instagram to look at the story and tell you what happened but we are here now and we're transferring uh, he's transferring all the pieces so for instance like my ecs uh, bleeder block uh, my forged motorsport short shifter uh, so there you go guys so I'm gonna go let them finish doing this job and we're gonna go for a drive breaking the beef the, the BFI stage 4 six puck clutch that sprung in the car Oh God. So, transmission's fixed, clutch is put in. Um, I'm still breaking it in, obviously. Um, uh, this, obviously, this is not the same exact day. This is like about a week afterwards. I'm almost finished breaking it in. But now we're gonna talk to you about what broke, which we described was the second gear in the transmission. So we already know what broke, right? The the transmission broke, second gear. I had no second gear. Uh, I'm not gonna go into specifying like what that was about um, in regards to what it was like. I already described that situation to everybody. Um, but in a nutshell, went from first to second. I got off the highway. Um, I shifted down into second with no problem. Merged off the highway to the main road. It, obviously the car was in neutral waited until it was clear traffic went from first gear obviously shifting from neutral into first driving onto the road shifting into second from first and not really like doing like a like a power shift it was just a, it was a transition and then it just went the one thing that we don't know now is why why did it break is it because i threw too much power uh, is it because I, is it, it could simply be because I threw too much power at it Which doesn't seem likely because I know people who make even more power than me who don't have Who don't have this issue other people asking like is it because of the DKM clutch? I feel like Yes, and no and the reason why I say that is because um, I don't know if it's because of the way I shift. I don't know if it's because I, I, me personally, I think it's because I think as a part of it has to do with the DKM clutch and also due to the fact that um, the transmission probably just took a crap out. It's, it's just like, nah, I don't wanna do this no more. And it just like, was just like not nah, on vacation. What I, so basically what I'm seeing here is that something caused this to happen. I don't know exactly what caused it to happen, but I will be clear and say this, that maybe, like like going to the DKM clutch, right? Maybe it was, you know, maybe it's because it was an unsprung twin disc and all that mass and shock switching into each gear and letting off the clutch. You know, obviously if you're driving fast or if you're driving where you need to shift quickly, you're gonna be transferring a lot of shock to the transmission, especially in first gear. Um, not launching the car, but just not even launching the car, but just like initial stop and go. And don't worry about the rattle that's changed that's in my uh, cup holder. But, you know, I I don't know if, you know, six, like, you know, the DKM clutch is rated for 660 pound feet of torque. And that's not necessarily to say that, you know, do I need 660 pound feet of torque? I don't. I'm not gonna put 660 pound feet of torque in this car near not even near come close to it 500 the most but that's torque and even then i'm risking the the block because the block can hold 500 plus so i don't know what the block can hold i'm not trying to get near that torque level so now it comes back to the drawing board do i put another dkm clutch in this car for the third time 
or do I go to another route? And that's why I decided to switch. That's why I really did my research. And also for bang for buck, bang for buck, customer service, um, bang for buck, customer service, good reputation, and um, you know, just a good standing. I feel as if uh, I feel as if Black Forest Industries was the right choice uh, in this regard. And you know, it's just to say, like you know. Like I spoke to BFI, I gave, addressed all of my questions, someone answered the phone, um, and and I was able to talk to somebody for a good amount of time to ask them like, hey, these questions, this question, what about torque, what about this, what about that? And, you know, and BFI has been a partner of the channel for a while, it's, it's, you know, it's not, not biased of them, that's why I, I even went the DKM route before going BFI. I had the BFI um, engine and transmission mounts in my car, and they've been great. So when it came down to figuring out a clutch, you know, everyone was just like, "Well, why won't you go to BFI?" And the only bad thing I could find out about BFI was chatter noise. And I was like, "Oh well, this thing's a race car at this point. I really don't care about noise. As, as, as far as this being the daily driver, I think is beyond gone at this point. It's begun." getting to that point it's beyond even trying to even think about this car being a daily driver so noise is like not the craziest thing in the world just to say i don't think that the twin disc is good for my application of vehicle so that's why i went with the bfi stage four which is a six puck clutch it's rated to hold 500 um horsepower 500 torque uh that's crank torque not wheel torque but that's currently what the setup is supposed to be with this car anyway. I don't want to make over 450 wheel torque. This car currently makes about 430, 440-ish torque. And that's fine. That's a lot of torque for a four-cylinder. And this car weighing, I would say, a little over 3,000 pounds. You know, you really can't argue. You really can't argue. You can't complain. You can't draw any type of concern to that. So I'm like, you know what? I don't need the most torque. But you can give horsepower the highest number. Now that number was supposed to be 500, but getting off tangent. Basically, I feel like this was a better application for the car. Um, Noticely, already I've noticed that my engagement shifting is much better. Like that. The, 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 with the DKM, I did have a problem going in reverse. That was an issue for a while for me. And I just kind of shrugged it off. Like, okay, well that's maybe the characteristics. But a lot of people told me, including Geo at European Auto, including um, the guys over at the custom shop, including close Volkswagen friends who have Mark 7s, they don't have this issue. So for me, it's just like, okay, well, you know, do I, what do I do? Do I, do you know, is it, does, is it wise for me to, you know, as you guys know, 6,000 miles ago, and I'm not, and I'm not here to bash DKM, but it's become a problem where 6,000 miles ago, I ran into a clutch failure issue. Then 6,000 miles later, which is current time, I have an issue with the transmission and shifting. So I would, I would feel, I don't, I don't, I would feel weird putting another DKM clutch in the car, knowing that I've had a problem before. And then I've had a problem recently. A lot of people told me like, Hey, whatever the clutch did the last time could have possibly weakened the transmission. Which is true, it could anything's possible. So I'm not fully putting this blame on DKM, but I feel like it's time to go to another route and do something different. Something I know has been proven in the industry. Something that the company has been around for an extremely long time making good quality parts. The last thing I want to talk about is the uh, is the transmission. Now I could have gone and spent and buy a new gear set, which was originally the plan. I was originally to go. I was really originally supposed to go ahead and get a new gear set for the car, due to the fact that since I did lose second gear, I was like, okay, maybe it's a shift fork, maybe it's uh, a synchro, maybe I lost second gear altogether. Because what happened? What happened weirdly? So I drove the car to the shop, but the, when I drove the car to the shop was not the initial day that the car broke. The car broke a week and a half prior to that, and. Um, I had, you couldn't get in the second at all. It would just really bind up like something was binding between the teeth. And I guess when I was driving to the shop, 
whatever, I, I, as the transmission kept spinning, whatever was binded up between that second gear fell to the bottom of the transmission. So that really didn't help me either because I was like, oh, okay, so I can get in the second, but sec if you, like if I put the gear car in second gear, this is how it felt. If I put the car in second gear, this is when I was driving the Geo Shot. If I put the car in second gear, push the clutch in, put it in second, let go of the clutch and push the gas, it's like I'm in neutral. That can't happen. That, 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 that's why I was like, okay, I lost second gear completely. It's weird. It's weird to like sit there and, and, and continue going on this path and I don't know what's causing it. Now the six pug is a sprung clutch. So the clutch will take some of the shock away from the, um, from the transmission. And the reason why I didn't do the, uh, the gear set, I could have replaced the whole gear set and upgraded synchro, well, upgraded shift forks and new synchros. It would have cost me $5,800. Now everyone's just like, that's crazy. My Mark IV, you can get gear sets for like under a grand. True. But the Mark VII is still technically a current, it's a current present platform. The Mark VIII's not out yet. So the Mark VII and the Mark VII and a half share the same manual transmission. To find, to actually getting a company to do it and to actually figure out what it would cost to do it was extremely expensive. And not to say that I don't think that the car needed it. I don't think the car needed upgraded gear sets because there's people making more power and more torque than me who, uh, who, who apparently don't like, who apparently have no issues with their trends. And I don't do flat foot shifting. I don't do none of that. So I take my time in between shifts. I really do a pause in between shifts. So I don't know. So next video, not the next video, but a later on, you're going to see us open the transmission. We're going to drain the fluid. We're going to look and see if the fluid was contaminated. We're going to see if the car can just get a second gear replaced. And who knows, maybe, um, uh, maybe use that as a spare transmission. Uh, maybe it'll only cost me $200 to fix. I don't know, but we're going to open it up in front of you guys. We're going to drain the fluid. We're going to open it up. We're going to see actually what the failure was and determine the cause of failure. And then I bought a used trans. So this trans, ironically, these cars were built within the same week of each other. Um, there's a VIN numbers. The VIN number that was from the crash car that I got this transmission from and my car are very, very close. I'm talking about like a hundred numbers off. Like it's very close. And it was the correct transmission. So I was like, cool, no worries. This transmission had about 24,000 miles in it. My transmission had 109,000 miles on it. So I definitely see me myself having a, a little bit of life in this trans. And the only reason why I didn't get one OEM new from Volkswagen is because they were back ordered and due to the coronavirus, I don't know when I would have gotten it. So, but the shifting feels great. No problems. And also you're gonna, by the way, you're also gonna get an update. I'm gonna give you a video talking about the BFI clutch, the break-in process, my thoughts, my thirst, you know, uh, you know, and everything about it. So, but I can honestly say it's very aggressive. Um, and that's all I'm gonna say so far. But again, a lot of people have told me in the past that it feels a lot better as the break-in happens. So I'm gonna let that happen. I'm gonna give you guys another report. I'm try to bring in some miles on this thing. And obviously me just cruising on a highway doesn't help. So I'm trying to find some neighborhood roads and also run into some traffic. So I'm gonna go ahead and break in this clutch. You guys, make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you do like this video. And also, if you do like the channel, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe to the channel, JR14. And you guys always remember, when you break transmissions and then you have to replace them with six bucks clutch, clutches because you now know that your car's not a daily anymore, you guys always remember that cars are a lifestyle. Take care.